Hand loaders, bullet casters, welcome back to my bench. This particular video here is specifically for my good friend and subscriber, Johnny1982. He has uh, sent me comments and stuff uh, on a couple of different occasions, wanting to kind of see what my techniques are as far as using uh, specifically, I believe, this micrometer. Uh, excuse me, micrometer caliper <laughs> okay so there is a difference folks and the terminology does matter okay so we often will use a caliper for the majority of our uh, measurements a lot of us these days are using one of these digital ones batteries dead so sorry folks you're just not going to see much excitement going on in here uh, this is not my preferred type to use though it does have its advantages uh, but what I want to specifically focus on is just kind of the technique that I use. And I'm going to focus on this one here. Some of you may have one of these. And I would like to get into this, but I might not do it in this video. Because it seems like the question is, what are you doing to get consistent measurements with your uh, caliper? Okay, I prefer a dial caliper. And the reason why is... I feel like I can see a lot of what's going on with that needle. Also, I do not really have to worry too much about whether the battery's going to go dead or if there's a weakening in the battery that might be affecting my measurements. Now, I want to make sure that it's zeroed. And I would say that's pretty dang close to zero. But I like to keep this little piece of paper inside the case with it because I want to show you something let's get close that looks like a decent zero but we always want to make sure that we clean the blades all right and I'm just going to kind of gently press them in there and I'm going to slide it out so let's look at what we have now we have a zeroed uh caliper here folks now did y'all see that difference hopefully you got it it was a smidge off to the right because there was a little grime that built up from my last project so good little tip keep one of these handy know where it's at so that way you're not digging through the junk mill and everything you need to find a piece of paper to clean out your caliper so also it is handy to have something that is a known thickness. Well, since I use this pretty regular, I have found that generally we're close to four thousandths of an inch. Just about right on the money. My Sterrett micrometer gives a much finer measurement and we'll probably see that it's actually a little bit less. I don't know, I'm not gonna test it. But I don't think it's a dead four thousandths of an inch, but it sure likes looks like it here on this dial caliper. And this is good enough for the vast majority of our purposes. Okay, so once again, we see it zeroed. Now, this little thumb wheel is a very handy tool. It does allow you to kind of just move in and move out uh, with ease. If you didn't have it, you'd be pushing on the body. And I do notice a little bit of, you know, cumbersomeness to that. So the thumb wheel does an excellent job of helping in this situation. However, if you notice, we also have this serrated section right here that is intended for the good old fashioned thumb to engage. And I want to show you something here with these bullets. My good buddy, Mark, with a K, over at MCK, his channel, check him out, like him, subscribe him, all that good stuff, sent me these bullets recently from a 7.62x39 project. And I just want to take a moment to thank him one more time and show off his work. And so since I'll be working with these bullets here pretty soon, I figured this is a good time to take some measurements. So I'm using my little thumb wheel here after I've already verified I got a good zero. And I'm just going to come in on the flats 
right here. And there's a little bit of pressure that I've applied on the thumb wheel, but now really I'm just applying enough pressure to rotate the little bearings on it. At this point, I'm going to use my index finger and my thumb to kind of hold pressure against the body itself. This way I know that this section is about as square as I can make it. Now, with the other hand, I'm going to ensure that the jaws are pretty well secured. I'm not trying to squeeze, I'm just trying to hold. Okay, so hopefully this helps, but I am getting a measurement, let's see here, of 0.315. If you have a digital, this might have a five in your fourth digit. Uh, it may or may not. It might just round up and down. The Starrett is definitely not going to tell me an exact 0.315. It's going to give me something close to it. But for our practical purposes, I'm just going to call this a 0.315. And the question is, you know, how repeatable is this? Well, this bullet might not be 100% concentric. So if I'm going to take a second measurement, just to verify my first measurement was correct, I'm going to do my best to make sure that we are in the same exact spot. Okay, so it's probably not quite the same. It's actually 0.316. Now what happened here? Is this a fault of the tool? Or did I slowly rotate? Ah, looky there. Did you see that shift? That is just from an ever so slight rotation. So this might be exactly where it was, but as you can see, you know, little minor movements will affect this. We've got these pretty sharp jaws or uh, engagement points right here. We can apply the same type of measurement, do the exact same thing, however, one thing we have to be certainly sure of is that we are on what we're trying to measure square. So that's what's helpful about using the flat section of the jaws versus these bladed uh, sections there. So certain movements right there may affect our measurement. So really, I would suggest taking some time to do a little practice with your measurement tools. Now we've returned to zero. Notice here that I'm just kind of verifying it by making sure everything is held together. You know, this is essentially how I would take the measurement. So if we're using the same technique as best as we can during our measurement uh, that we use to verify our zero, Chances are, you know, we're being very consistent in how we use this tool. Now, all of that is well and good with real small items. What if I want to just look at the length of this factory steel cased cartridge? Um, of course, I want to come over here. Do we have a good zero? Yes, I have maintained my zero. I'll just go ahead and bring this sucker out. Don't be too harsh with them. I am going to set right there. I'm using the thumb wheel to bring it in. Okay. But the thumb wheel is not what I'm going to stick with. Now this thing needs to settle in. A little bit of jiggle and a little bit of shake to make sure that that cartridge is actually right in there will help. Now, as you can see, once again, I am, you know, thumb, index, finger. I'm just gently kind of hugging the calipers because what can happen is, folks, this section can flex this way if we're applying every bit of our pressure against this thumb wheel or against this thumb piece. So I want everything to be kind of even two-handed grip. You guys are familiar with that, right? Well... There's good gun control. Now there's good caliper control. <laughs> so I hope this helps, guys. 
Uh, I'll measure out one more thing with you since I believe the question ultimately came up after watching my video where I was trimming cases with uh, um, my Ellie Wilson case trimmer. See? Thumb wheel. Alright. So next step. Little serrated thumb portion. Index finger up at the top. Now I'm gently just holding. I don't know. I've, I've never taken any classes on machining or anything of that nature. But I do understand that there's a certain way tools like this need to be used. So I try to you know, be as consistent as possible. Of course, if your tooling is not cooperating, then there's going to be a problem. So hopefully you got, you know, something decent that's working. I'm going to just recommend, if you can, go with the dial. They do require a little bit of education on how to read it, but they're very simple to learn. And, you know, I, I just really feel like there's a better advantage going with this dial and seeing the feedback of the needle versus, you know, some digits that may or may not appear for any random reason. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going to say that's basically what I do. Mark, once again, thank you for these bullets. They have already served a purpose for the greater good in the gun channel community. So, good on you, brother. And Johnny1982, I hope this helps. Please let me know. God bless you. Like, subscribe, and come check me out on Rumble, Leadsmith45.